Bernadette said, I fear nothing because I have always told the truth. It is to this truth that we have remained faithful, the truth concerning the people and places, truth in the deeds and words, truth of the souls, nothing but the truth, even when it seems unbelievable. In 1866, the grotto at Lourdes had changed considerably over the past eight years since that day when for the first time appeared the lady in white with the blue sash. Now Bernadette is 22, and she can no longer recognize her grotto. She has only one desire, to flee from the curiosity of the crowds and seek refuge in a convent. You will come back to see us. Never. And never again did Bernadette return to Lourdes. Early on the morning of the 4th of July, Bernadette went to Taub, where she boarded a train for Nevers by way of Bordeaux. And it would be so difficult. Bernadette, aren't you thirsty? Thank you, my mother. Don't be sad, Bernadette. This is no time for self-pity. We're almost there. No, my mother. Marie, are you thirsty? No, but thanks, my mother. And you, my sister? No, my sister. Forgive me, Lord, for being so weak. I'm so afraid that I won't be strong enough. Never, never. End of the line. All passengers disembark, please. Leontine, help the gentleman take down your trunk. Yes, my mother. Marie, your umbrella. Bernadette, are you dreaming? No, my mother. General is feeling ill. She asked Mother Superior to welcome you. I've already told her. My children, now you are all going to meet Mother Marie Therese Vouzou. She is superior of the novices. It is to her that you will address yourselves. Try to honor all the instruction you have received. Welcome, my sisters. I trust you've had a good journey. A bit too long, but splendid. I'd never traveled by train before. It's miraculous. <laughs> I suppose these young ladies are quite tired. No, no my, my mother. mother. My sister, I'd like to present Leontine Mouret. She's only 17, but she's been an excellent student at our institution. Marie Laratiste de Manière is 24. Her family life has somewhat disturbed her, but her postulate has not suffered. Bernadette Soubirou, a slow learner, my sister. At 22, she's just able to read and write. She made her first communion at 15. Since then, she has found it difficult to keep up with the class. I fear you can't ask her too much, my sister. 
Only fortunately, Bernadette is willingness itself. And she catches on quickly. Sister Cloris will now accompany you to the refectory where your dinner is all ready. And when you have finished, you will all go directly to the dormitory. You'll spend the night there. In the morning, they'll receive their habits as postulants. Are you the one who's come from Lourdes? Yes, my mother. With Leontine Moray. What can you do, child? In fact, there isn't much I can do. Tomorrow morning, if you aren't too fatigued. If you like, you could wash dishes after everyone's eaten. Please, yes, my mother. Lazy Bones, don't you know how late it is? It's six o'clock. At night? <laughs> six in the morning, Dumbbell. Dominiquette. Dominiquette, hooray! <laughs> There, back at the grotto, we prayed together, remember? And you took religious vows. It's to your credit, but still only a novice. <laughs> Dominica Touré. Here, I'm Sister Philomen. We wake at five, and then mass is at 6.15. All right, wake up. Don't worry. Our instructions are to let the newcomers sleep in. You get an hour more. You're all welcome, my children. Have you all slept well? Yes. I hope you've all recuperated after your journey, for tomorrow you will obey the rules of the community. Sister Emilienne and Sister Philomène are in charge of your instruction. I chose these sisters because they are Pyrenees girls just as you are. They're your guardian angels, so pay close attention to them. Listen and do as they say. At 7.10, you will take breakfast in the refectory, and now, if you'd like to all go and wash. All quite clear? Yes, yes Mother. Mother. Oh, just one thing. At midday, after the noon meal, you will go and join the other sisters in the novitiate room. Bernadette Soubirou as well. Uh, you're Bernadette? Yes, my mother. Bernadette Soubirou will tell us about her apparitions. Again? I assure you, this telling will be the only one If you please, let's be quiet, please. My sisters, I've given a promise. Finally, the moment you've so looked forward to. Bernadette Soubirou, here before us, will relate her experience, her vision, granted to her by extraordinary heavenly favor. And once she has completed it, she'll say no more, the subject is closed. You accept a solemn undertaking never to speak of it again, even among yourselves. I charge you as a matter of conscience. Now, open your eyes and your ears. Bernadette, my child, will you please rise? Come to the center so we may all see and hear. Go on. We know it was in 1858, February the 11th, while gathering, uh, gathering pieces of brushwood to burn in her family hearth. Bernadette saw appear within the grotto at Massabiel a lady completely in white and wearing a sash of blue, with a yellow rose on each foot as well. How did you know she was the Blessed Virgin? Well, that's the point. Who she was, I didn't know. Yes, all right. Exactly when were you sure she was the Holy Virgin? <laughs> Just let the certainty of seeing the Blessed Virgin be your pillar of strength. Your vision is there before Albeit you. Albeit with no vainglorious pride in your soul. I never earned any right to this grace. Come in, Sister Doite. Let us welcome you here among us. Sister Doite is very old. She no longer sees, but she can hear somewhat on condition you speak loudly.
I repeat my question. When, Bernadette, were you sure that the Lady in White was indeed the Blessed Virgin? At a certain time, Monsieur le Curé proposed that when I spoke to her, I ask her name. I asked for it. Her reply to me was, Que soy era Immaculata Conception. I am the Immaculate Conception. It's marvelous. She spoke in Patois? To me, yes, because that way I understood everything she said. What name did you use to call this virgin before having been convinced she was the virgin? It wasn't me. Whenever she wanted, she would be there. When it began, we'd speak together. I would call her Akiero. In Patois, it means that thing. It was before I knew her name. Where's the harm in that? Oh, harm. No harm of any kind. She spoke in a way that somebody would speak to another person. She was always terribly polite. It was our third day, I remember. And she said, I have a request. I wonder if you would have the kindness to return to this place another two weeks. She said, would I have the kindness? Would I? Nobody ever spoke to me in that way. You can guess how I wanted to see her, the way she said, even when she told me that I would not be content in this world, but in the next. If I could hear it again. I just said I was very glad I wanted to see her again. Oh, I quite understand. It seemed everybody was sure I shouldn't return to the grotto. Papa and Mama, the Curé, the Commissaire of Police, even the Imperial Prosecutor. And so, as I saw it, either I would disobey all these people, or else I'd disobey Akero. And so I chose. Oh, she was never sad. She was one time. She asked me to pray for the world's sinners. And then she clasped her hands, eyes firmly closed, and told me that I must kiss the earth in penance for the world's sinners. Of course, that's what I did. My poor Aunt Lucy just fainted when I performed the act. Apparently, it was the 1st of March, and it was the 10th time the apparition occurred. There was then purported to be the first miraculous cure. What can you tell us about that? About what? I never saw a miracle. And yet, I have read that on that day, you cured a blind girl by laying your hands on her. Not me. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Have you seen Bernadette? No, Mother. <laughs> Bernadette Subiru, do you know where she is? Yes, Mother. She's at the grotto. Will you go and tell her it's the hour for recreation and not praying? There's a time for everything. Superior sent me to say that you have to obey the rules of our community. There are hours for recreation during the day, noon to one o'clock, and in the evening, seven to eight o'clock. Well, she reminds you, doesn't she? This one is the least ugly, but she wasn't at all like that. She is Our Lady of the Waters. When he sees the Virgin in heaven, the artist won't say he's proud of it. You use tobacco? Yes, Dr. Dizu told me to take it for my asthma. Do you skip rope during recreation hour? <laughs> no. Our recreations are joyous. Only skipping rope, we don't do that. Oh, that's too bad. I'm used to holding the rope for others. I enjoy that. I bless with you the Lord who has filled your hearts with a sacred vocation. Each of you will receive a new name. 
This will remind you of your renunciation of this world and that you belong entirely to Jesus Christ, whom you have chosen as husband. Sister Marie Bernard. Sister Marie Bernard. May the Lord invest you with the new man who is created by God in justice, in the sanctity of truth. difficulty in understanding the reasons why we fear the presence within Sister Marie Bernard of the sin of pride. This explains why we have decided to refuse any and all visits that can't be justified. But how could we show such cruelty and deny to our illustrious donor an encounter with our celebrated visionary? One says that the child's modesty is charming. That's right, Monseigneur. Sister Marie Bernard has no affectation. The reason why I came was to hide here. At Lord, I was given a promise at the convent nobody would ask any questions. Consider, Bernadette, that Monseigneur de Mirod is the confessor of the Pope. The Pope wouldn't be guilty of committing many sins. There's also Monseigneur de Marguerite. For you especially, he came a long way to see you assume your habit. The Count and Countess de chirigny Lafont are benefactors to our convent. They would like to get mentioned in your prayers. Well, I too need people's prayers. They pray for my soul, and I'll do the same. Should I remind you, child, of your oath this morning? Along with your habit, you swore an oath of obedience, too. So if you please, you must obey. You wear your veil too far out in front. To me, it's my little chapel. I feel better this way. Remember that Don de la Verne, the holy founder of our order, gave us obedience as an absolute rule. Talk, talk, Not talk. Us to question. I am all alone with God. He understands me. These pitiful bishops, they do better staying home. I have too much pride, my mother. You are right. But being here, I will try to learn, for I know pride is a sin. Splendid, my child. Would you be pleased to see your grotto again? It's no longer my grotto, Monseigneur. My mission is finished at Lourdes. What would I do there? Now I'm like everyone else there. Aren't you afraid that you'll forget your visions? I'll forget? Ah, no, Monseigneur. They're in here. And did the Holy Virgin smile at your child? Yes, she did, quite a lot. There was one day when I remember where she laughed. She really did. It was when I mentioned the request of Monsieur Le Curé, if she would arrange an early flowering with the roses in mid-February. She didn't say anything. Only I was thinking, there she was, there in front of my eyes. To me, it was enough proof. My sister, there is in this envelope the modest sum of a hundred francs that we would like to donate the Countess and I, to Notre Dame de Lourdes. Would you be kind enough, my sister, to convey it directly to the parish priest? We desire earnestly that it pass through your hands. Our wife? We thought it possibly would then give our gesture an additionally, uh, well, an additional, uh, a priceless impact. No, I will not accept it. I've no wish to send your donation. That's fine, my child. You may leave now. And so, the lady in white said, go and tell the priest a procession should come here and a chapel built. I go find the curé, Monsieur Paramel, only he gets angry. A chapel? He asked me then. Have you the money? <laughs> and I say, no, Monsieur le curé, not one sou. You know what he told me then? Well, me too. <laughs> it didn't begin too well. My little brother saw Lady in White. 
Not all ladies in white are the Holy Virgin. Did yours go flying through the air? Like a bird, did she fly away? <clears throat> no, mine didn't fly away at all. You said at each foot a rose was put. Ah, pretty roses, yellow ones. How was it they didn't fall off? A miracle. Cobblers, aren't there any in heaven? I know there's one. Papa's there. He was bad. He beat your mother. He's not in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> They're so happy. It's a joy to see them like that. I think quite a change has taken place in the orphanage. There's always a wondrous change when Sister Mary Bernard's here. Your novices will soon disperse all over France. Would you be in favor of Sister Mary Bernard's coming here? She wouldn't be unhappy. No doubt, my sister. The veritable vocation of Bernadette is surely charity. I suppose it's here. She'd have good occasion to exercise it. <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Uh, uh, Cole, don't worry. When I see the Virgin, I'd better ask her for just one thing. Some costume. <laughs> Now you see, my sister, why I cannot give you Sister Mary by now. Thank you, my child. Our dear orphans will always remember your visit. Come back to see us often. Pray to the Virgin that she protect you all. But you don't know our name. The Holy Virgin knows. <coughs> My dear child, I know what you wanted at the orphanage. I would grant your wish. I know, my mother. I know I'd be happy there at the orphanage. I'm not educated. I couldn't be a teacher. But I could tell stories. I suppose God has chosen other words. I have to accept that. His will... I know what you're going through. For more than ten years, my poor child, I've had your suffering. I know that it won't be long now. Now we'll change your poultice. Just four hours more. It's going to burn your skin, but you can stand it. Don't worry about it, sister. No, I'm like a cat. I'm toughened to pain. Now rest a bit. Try to keep your vesicatory in place as long as possible. All this is good for heaven. She got very sick the day after she arrived. Only this time, they won't operate. She's going home. I see no alternative. She won't come and see me. It's like I scared. 
scare her. After all, I'm sick too. My mother, I beg you, come and see me. Talk to me. I love you. I'm your child too. There, what did I say? Didn't even look at me, not one glance. What did I do to <laughs> Well, lazy bones, still loafing, are we? It's my work I'm doing. Oh, what work? My work as a patient. Would you mind granting a request? No, my sister, on the contrary. It concerns Annette Basset, the postulant lying over there. Yes, my sister. The poor child's very shocked and sad. Mother General agrees entirely with Dr. Sancia. They've decided she'll have to go, and she is so unhappy. Would you try to cheer her a little? I'll try. Don't give up hope that one day your superior will come and embrace you. She wants to, terribly. No, that much I wouldn't ask. All our personal requests, the blessed Lord never pays attention to. No more, mademoiselle. You will take your vows as a sister. God wants it. You will succeed. Yes, but the doctor said I'll go away. I'm too sick to stay here. Where are you from? The Gouttière, in the Puy de Dome. You are going to go into another congregation. Because the doctor is mistaken. You have many more years to live. And when you die, it'll be on a Sunday, in a small and very poor convent. My sister, what are you doing out of bed? Visiting my flock. Listen to me, all of you. Sister Mary Bernard is terribly sick. She's now in the infirmary and it's impossible to see her. If you wait here, you're wasting your time. At least let us in the chapel. No. The convent must retain its calm and its composure. Go away, all of you. Go home. How can we make them understand our sister's not an animal in a circus for the entertainment of the crowd? Should we resist this infatuation of the crowd? Or just accept it as preordained? Sister Mary Ben, I remind you, isn't a saint, my mother. She's only an ordinary sister. If you recall, you said that. Yes, but in her expression is all we revere. Simplicity, innocence, union with God. It's a Bernadette worthy of the theater. Not one sign of vanity in this photograph. To me, she inspires a certain sadness. There's Bernadette, just waiting for something she needs. No doubt what she thought she'd find here. What's bothering you? My mother, exactly what's bothering you. Her apparitions. As you say, her apparitions. I realize the extraordinary qualities in the child, and truly, I want with all my heart to treat her with affection and respect. But whatever I will, I'm confronted with it. I do not believe in apparitions. You do realize the visions of parents... <laughs> what? Marked with the seal of approbation by the church. For you, my mother, the rest is for Sister Marie Bernard. 139 letters. Nineteen more today. In her condition, she isn't going to be able to read all that. Oh, I don't agree. She once said, I can't read all the letters, but what counts is the spirit they contain. Sister Mary Bernard must learn to be ignored in this world. Our Mother Superior is not very taken with the things of Lord. 
All right, let the Holy Virgin decide to appear to us someplace in the world. But why, then, should she appear to a peasant who is crude and ignorant instead of choosing a virtuous, educated sister? Would you have found Joan of Arc too impolite? And this morning I received this letter. Annette Basset, you know, she was the postulate we had to send away because she was sick. She radiates happiness. Received into the congregation of St. Joseph de Cluny. I'll read it. Tell dear sister Marie Bernard, her prediction was accurate. I am now also a sister in a small and very poor convent. My present name is Sister Bertelli. She will not survive the night. Thursday, October 25th, 1866. Barely four months after entering the convent, here she is on the point of death. Pardon us, Monseigneur, for asking you to come at such an hour. Sister Marie Bernard is no better. It is our most cherished desire that our sister profess before dying. But of course, as you are aware, your dispensation is indispensable. I will allow no one else to receive the profession of Sister Marie Bernard. Where is she? In the infirmary. Sister Lucy here will show you the way. You're going to die, my child, and I understand you desire to profess. I am here to receive your profession. You will bear the official title, Bride of Jesus Christ. A formula? I, I won't have the strength uh, to say all of the words. Uh, that poses no difficulty. I will pronounce all the words for you. It is enough for you to reply. Uh, yes, so be it. Now I, Sister Marie Bernard Soubirou, accept and promise God to accomplish and to keep all the vows of poverty, of chastity, obedience, and charity in the way they're all explained in the Book of Rules. Sister Marie Badar, don't forget me in your prayers when in heaven, child. I'll forget no one. Shall I stay here right to the end? No, it is for me to close Sister Marie Bernard's eyes. I fear that it will not be a long wait. The reason for giving profession tonight, because you imagined that tonight I would die. Oh well, ah, but I won't die tonight. You what? You inform me you won't die tonight, but you never said anything. You let us send for Monseigneur in the middle of the night, disrupted everything. You're a stupid, silly child. Now listen, Marie Bernard, tomorrow, if you're still alive, I'll... Take off your head at once, your veil of profession, and you'll return at once to the novitiate. Whatever you want, my dear mother. It's impossible, it can't be. You're alive, you haven't died. However did you manage that? 
The blessed Lord just wasn't ready to call me yet. I went all the way up to the door, and what he said is, it's too soon. You may return. She's still very weak. But please, you must stay calm. No silly questions. In groups of eight, please. And no more than five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. My little saint, here you are. You all right? Your little saint's much better now. Our papa didn't want me at all. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And so now you're well again. I am still too bad to go to heaven, I guess. Oh, a fine thing scaring us like that. We did nine novenas in a day for you to get well. And you're looking at the result. I did my profession. <laughs> Only it didn't count. Mother Superior said because you didn't die. In the interim, I have it and they won't take it away. Now I'm in the congregation. Nobody can make me leave here. The Moulin Lacadé where Louise Soubirou, Bernadette's mother, is about to die. Enter. It certainly wasn't long that I was professed. You never were in reality. Returning to health annuls the profession in articulo mortis. Then if I were dead, I'd be professed? Yes, you would be. I really love my veil. The muslin veil can never be enough to merit going to heaven. No, to go to heaven, the path is straight and narrow, a steep slope that only with pain you will climb. Your veil will return when you have merited it. For now is a time of trial, Sister Marie Bernard. You won't go too rapidly, my mother. My child, now we can wrap your knuckles. I hope you won't wrap them too hard, mother. One year later, October 30th, 1867. What do you wish, my daughter? Speak your mind before this assembly. Monseigneur, I do supplicate to be received and heard for profession into the Sisters of Charity and into Christian instruction. Is it with free will and for the greater glory of God with no earthly purpose that you want to espouse this estate? Yes, Monseigneur. And my only intention is to accomplish what God wants me to do. May God, who has placed this good intention within you, grant you the grace to persevere and accomplish it. So be it. Sister Angelique Camon, you are assigned to the National Institution for the Young Hard of Hearing. You leave tomorrow. Sister Camille Autis. You are being sent to our community of Mirande in the Gers. You will leave day after tomorrow. Sister Charles Rémillon. After Sunday Mass, you will go to our convent in Seignolet, in the Yonne. Why was there no call for Sister Marie Bernard? Uh, was there no letter of obedience for her? It's not possible, Monseigneur. A stupid girl, good for nothing. She will certainly be useless wherever she goes. Sister Marie Bernard, come here, child. <coughs> it's truly a fact, my child. You are good for nothing. It's a fact, Monseigneur. Well then, my poor little one. Then what shall we do with you? I told you already, at Lourdes. 
And you said it would be best if I was sent here to be in the community. You said it didn't matter, and so I was sent here. If you wish, Monseigneur, we might retain Sister Mary Bernard with us. She would remain here. I work at various menial tasks in the infirmary, in cleaning up or making the infusions. Well, since she's always ill anyway, it's just where she ought to be. And what have you to say, Sister Marie Bernard? I shall try, Monseigneur. Then, Sister Marie Bernard, we're going to send you no place. I give to you as your employment, then, prayer. How much do you want to earn, charming shepherdess? How much do you want to earn to watch over the sheep? Is that a song from your region? Isn't much trouble carrying a song, so I brought one along. It reminds me of home. Are you homesick? Here I have a better chance of going to heaven. If it is too much or too dear, I will then just take to wood and chew. Do anything to be worthy of heaven. Suffer anything for the glory of God. May his will be done. <sighs> Sister Marie Bernard, you'll not be canonized. No, why? Because you practice that. St. Vincent de Paul failed almost to get a halo on account of tobacco. Do you take tobacco, Sister Chantal? What an idea! Well then, you'll get canonized. One day, our Lord appeared to St. Teresa in the form of a little child, radiating brilliant light. Sister Marie Bernard, even though you have professed not only do you find it difficult to follow novitiate instruction, but in addition, you must arrive late. Will you please pardon it, my mother? It's just that I was delayed by my work. What work? I washed the toilets, mother. <laughs> Go on, Sister Stanislas. Listen to this, Sister Marie Bernard, and try to learn from it. When she saw the infant Jesus who appeared, Saint Teresa had only one feeling to pick the child up and do whatever the child required. But, but at that instant, she heard the monastery bells start to ring, calling all the sisters to chapel. And so at once, without hesitating, St. Teresa put the child down on the ground and returned directly to her duties in the community. This is only a pious legend, as are perhaps almost all apparitions. But it's a remarkable example of obedience. My children, the question is this. What would you have done in St. Teresa's place? Who will answer? Sister Marie Bernard, any ideas on this? Well, I wouldn't have done what St. Teresa did. Instead of putting the infant down upon the ground, I'd have held him in my arm and gone into the chapel still holding him. A tiny baby doesn't weigh a lot. Sister Julienne, will you open the book on Our Lady of Lourdes at the chapter we were reading? Sister Marie Bernard, this reading is not for your ears. We'll wait until you leave. Oh. Before you go, please kiss the ground. I was looking for you just now. I just passed by the infirmary, and some patients need your care. I'm the one who's much sicker. It's the words of Mother Superior that have put you in this state. She's always after me, always. Mother is trying to point the way to perfection before you. And the Holy Virgin is the one who sent her. The Virgin made it clear you won't be content in this world, only in the other one. 
when you are hurt by anyone. Repeat this and keep repeating. Pass on, pass on, you creature. The Lord is mine still. God to me is sufficient. Repeat it. The Lord is mine still. God to me is sufficient. Good, my child. Will you return to your work now? Ah, <laughs> oh, a little more, my big little one. It's all for the Lord. Have to suffer some for God. He suffered for us. Remember, when the cataplasm's cold, give a call. You wanted to confide, they said. My sister, I would so like you to pray so I could get well. Yes, certainly. I will even make a novena. But you will not be cured of what you have. Only it isn't going to bring about your death. It will bring you suffering. Have to work very hard to make it into heaven. My sister, did the Holy Virgin tell you that? Sister, you are too curious. My sister, I finished sweeping. Sweeping? That what you call it? And this table wasn't dusted. I've polished the brass balls on the beds. They're polished, that's right. But the blessed Lord also looks underneath. In all places, my child. I'll give you a hand. Sister Emily chose me, and do you know why? Because in Lord, we were together. Yes, Bernadette. What can I do to help you now? You can start by helping me into my bed right now. Do you feel bad? Standing up, I do, but better when I lie down. Pardon me for disturbing you, sister. My name is Fanny Paquet. My husband's an upholsterer in Nevers, Rue d'Orisson. One day, my husband's aunt mentioned that in the convent there was a very pious sister, and she cured a child who wasn't able to walk, and... Is it possible that you're that sister? No, madame. I came here on account of my boy Ferdinand. He's two years and six months. He's always been sick. Never even been able to stand. We tried everything. Dr. Fischer already told me it's hopeless. I only hoped that the person said I should wait here and pretty soon the sister would come. And who was it who said that? A sister, but she wasn't young. She told me who she was, but I'm not sure I forget. Sister Mary Therese Vazou. Yes, that was it. Can I take the boy? It's you then. Is he baptized? Why, of course. Will you come this way? Pray with me, good mother. What are you thanking me for? The boy who was sick. So weak he was unable to stand. And I believe that you sent the child to me. Yes. Well? I prayed to the Virgin. I prayed that he'd stand. I truly believe that she heard. That's good news, my sister, but you've surely made a mistake. No, I had no part in this. 
Don't find it surprising when you go to the infirmary. You won't find your helper, Sister Alexandrine. I've assigned Sister Casimir in her place. But why? Old friends in Lourdes and working together. Before long, it's more gossip than work. Sister Casimir shall prove an excellent assistant. But with Alexandrine, I spoke patois. No harm in that. You will learn that a good sister will have to bear in her time more crosses than one. <laughs> what feeling, my dear sister? It's easy to see your affection for our mother superior. <laughs> it's quite a natural reaction, my dear sister. I'm repenting it now. But there it is, and what's done is done. Oh. Now, what's this? I give you only a drop, and I get a whole fountain? What's that? What is it? They're chapped. I'm ashamed when I see a pair of hands like that. All right, I have something that's good for them. You put honey? Yes. And you're not allowed to lick your hands. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, quickly. Sister Martha's ill. She just passed out. I'm coming. You can do it alone. A light coating, very gently. Don't rub. You understand? The principal nurse becomes ill, it will be all we need. Sister Mary Bernard, come closer, if you please. My dear child, Sister Martha, for a while, will be staying with her family. We have decided to replace her as principal nurse. Unanimously, we consider the one most apt to be her successor is the assistant nurse. I have to remind you, my mother, that I am good for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the esteemed Dr. Sensia tells us another story. Mm. Apparently, you are a pharmacist without compare. The war between France and Germany was coming to an end in the month of September with the capitulation of the French army at Sedan. The Germans had penetrated to the limits of the département. The ambulance stationed at the convent since hostilities had begun is ordered to join the retreating forces. The Garde Mobile take up positions to oppose the invader and the mother general decides to send the novices to the south and the others return to their families. My child, the Chevalier Gugnot de Mousseau wants to ask you a question. In this difficult time our country finds herself, Germans are at our portals, and probably Nevers will be occupied. Now, the mobile guard is in our garden. You have surely seen the cannons. Yes, my mother. Monsieur le Chevalier, say what you have to say. My sister, a rumor has spread through the diocese that the Holy Virgin has once more appeared to you. And the Virgin made revelations, important ones, revelations that concern the war. What do you say? Some also believe you have a mission, which the Holy Virgin gave you in sacred trust for the government. I explain rumors of this sort have no basis in truth. You have spoken the truth, my mother. Then since Lourdes, you've not experienced any other visions? Not one. And you've not been told any revelations concerning the future of France? None at all, monsieur. And so the Holy Virgin never spoke of anything? Uh, yes, monsieur, but never things of this world. Uh, the, the Prussians are at our very gates, and in you it inspires no fear at all. He's in all places, God, even among the Prussians. 
Well, then, sister, you would say we've nothing to fear concerning our enemies. It is only bad Catholics I fear. And that's all. When I was small, one day in church, the curé spoke about sinners. He was quite stern. The congregation was annoyed, but they just said, well, he's doing his job, that's all. I fail to see the point. I would say the Prussians are doing their job, monsieur. You look so troubled, my child. What is it? A nightmare? The evil one. He is after you. Right in bed, he's there. It's his special domain, child. Here, sit down. I start sleeping and then he appears. He tells me all sorts of things, awful things. The devil's within us, the way God is. You have to throw him out. When I do that, I use this. It's my method, and it works. There's holy water as well. Holy water? You spray holy water all over your bed, and very quickly the enemy is gone. Was there anything else, child? I'm scared. What are you afraid of, my child? Just suppose I was mistaken. And Mother Superior is right after all. In her opinion, I never saw the Virgin. Mother General doesn't want to accept it. They don't imagine I've been lying. No. They don't think that. Or I wouldn't be here, I know that. But it could be that my two eyes only thought she was there. Then you wouldn't have those eyes. That voice, that smile. You wouldn't be the Bernadette you are if the Virgin hadn't appeared to you. At Lourdes, it doesn't matter where. Child, you have seen her. And when I look into your eyes, I see her too. Be at peace. He was in the nude. <laughs> When I was 15, at the mansion of my parents, I used to enjoy going on hunts with my brothers and companions. One night, the door of my room burst open. In walked one of my brother's friends, in the nude, the way your devil did. Wearing only a nightgown, I ran into the woods. Then what? Just two days later, I went as a boarder with the Sisters of Nevers at Fijac. I wanted to show you how a naked man could lead you to God, too. Good night, Bernadette.
My dear sister, whatever's wrong? Has anyone inflicted pain? I just heard about it. My dear Papa's dead. It was Saturday. He went at nine o'clock. Not long ago, you had a terrible pain of your brother's sudden death. And now it's my turn. Did you come to get a remedy or what? Something for my throat. I caught a chill at recreation. Sister. Courage. Blessed heart of Jesus, accept each of my tears as supplication for those who suffer. Give me, I beseech you, the bread of detachment from creature things, the bread of patience to bear the suffering. The bread of my beloved father, Fiat. She's coming now. <laughs> Alte la, alte la, alte la, les montagnards, les montagnards. Alte la, alte la, alte la, les montagnards sont là. Les montagnards sont là. There we are, you as well. You are sick. Who can we trust? Montagne Pyrénée, vous êtes mes Oui, mes amours, cabane fortunée, vous me pleurez toujours, oui, oui, toujours. Montagne Pyrénée, vous êtes mes amours, oui, mes amours. Good evening, sister. Good evening, father. I would like to have an interview with Sister Mary Van Allen. Father, that isn't possible. We cannot lift the closure without the express permission of Monseigneur the Bishop of Nevers. At present, he is traveling. I've traveled rather a long way, and for only one purpose, to see Sister Mary Van Allen. That right is accorded only to bishops and to no one else. Oh, well, lucky for me. I am the Bishop of Orléans. Oh, I beg pardon, Monseigneur. I'll inform Mother Superior instantly. The general would pray you excuse her, Monseigneur. She's somewhat ill, unfortunately, and requested my presence in her place. Oh, thank you, sister. I shan't prevail on your kindness for long. Hmm. 
My name is Felix de Pontlou. An old bishop, and I've seen many things in this life and learned lessons, some of which quite bitter. I have an open mind, but I'm not gullible. I know the evil serpent lodges too often within clasped hands. I inform you, sister, the adulation of which you are object incites me to pose certain questions. I would pose them as well, Monseigneur. I hope that my asking questions doesn't tire you too much, sister. When the blessed Lord permits, we mustn't complain. I'm sure you realize we live in an era where visionaries spring up continually. La Salette, Betaram, Garrison, Melanie Calva, who has seen the Holy Virgin in the mountains of Savoie and sought refuge in a cloister. Unfortunately, she succeeded only in creating scandals moving from one convent to another. She finally was expelled after creating a scandal at the Carmelites. The curé does not one minute acknowledge her apparitions. I agree with him. How much she suffered. You feel sorry for her? Even when you suffer for a thing that's only imagined, you still become a martyr. Quite. Yes, certainly. Maybe that poor girl lied. I will still pray. Because we have to pray for those who do offense to God. Uh, for Melanie Calva, the trouble all began with her first convent, where she was shown a veritable veneration by her superiors. <sighs> that can't be the danger in my case here. There would be back at Lourdes. I believe you're considered there almost a saint. Yes, before you realize it, you're turned into one. But then... They're sure it won't be necessary to pray anymore for their saint. When I die, they'll all say, Sister Mary Bernard was only a saint, a little one. And while they're making jokes, I roast in purgatory. Pardon me, sister, you've been tired by our talk. Oh, I'm used to it. It really hurts not being able to get any breath. But it's more bearable than pain in the heart. You can believe what I say. I know you're right. Wouldn't you be glad to return to Lourdes? Have a look at your grotto? Ah, uh, yes. As a little bird, I would go. You realize that, Lourdes, I did what everyone does. I acquired your photograph. I paid 10 centimes for it. <laughs> That's all I'm worth. Well, in truth, it doesn't resemble you much. It's clear you were disguised as a saint, a little one, and that what you said. It wasn't only that. Because the photographer said I should look straight into the sky to pretend I was seeing the Virgin. She wasn't up there. Well, I'm not too sure. I think I'm about to be shown out. Monseigneur, the doctor wants Sister Marie Bernard in the infirmary. My work won't wait. You aren't going to ask me the questions that you wanted to, Monseigneur? I have no more questions. My sister. Please take very good care of Bernadette. It's a treasure of innocence that you possess. Well, so you're really here this time. You gave in at last. It must amuse you seeing me here. It doesn't amuse me. I'm astonished. 
When Mother Vozu told me I was to act as your guardian angel, I couldn't get over it. And to think back to the day of my departure, when I asked you whether you would like to come along. What? A sister of Nevers? Not me. Yet here you are. Yes, but it took me two years. God wasn't in a hurry, it appears. What are they saying at Lord? That you're going to return. That shall not be. As soon as I am gone, they'll want to get my poor dead carcass. But they won't get me. Look, the grotto's completely changed. It's very beautiful now. Oh, my poor grotto. Not what it is at all. To help you, sister said. I see our dear sisters at the hospice are all present. And I'm to say that Bernadette gets half the chocolate. They gave me all this for you as well. Ah, oh, my poor friend. I'll never see any of all that. Why not? Here, it will disappear. It's for the community. Well, you take the virgin. Your sister told me it's a present. There's a letter. Then it's a fact. Toinette is really selling religious objects in Lourdes. That's right. It's something I never wanted. Tell me, how is my Toinette? Well, losing two children in six months is pretty hard. And they were so young. <laughs> Do you know what Toinette says? She's awaiting a baby. And if it's a girl, they'll name her Bernadette. Go ahead. <coughs> Again? <coughs> Doctor, may I go to Easter morning mass? In two weeks, you'll be up again, on condition that you follow your treatment. I never do anything else. She might go any time, spitting blood. Will you summon Father Deuce? Tell him to prepare to give her extreme unction. Now, my child, perhaps you should consider entrusting God with your soul. It will be the third time I have received extreme unction. I always got well again. Well, you can't be sure. Maybe this time will be the good one. In heaven, we're happy. Here, we dirty ourselves. I want you to please accept with courage what I have to say. Yes, my mother. Your work at the infirmary is now a little more than you can take. I'll put Sister Gabrielle in charge this time. You'll agree, my sister, if you're to cure others, you can't be in bed too much yourself. I've done the two till now. I recognize fully you've shown truly remarkable courage and general competence. But we all have our limits. As long as I'm able to take care of others, no matter how little. Mother General and I want you to fulfill work that's somewhat lighter. Aid to the sacristy. It sounds good. And if you want, you may help Sister Gabrielle in the infirmary. And in that way, you have two jobs instead of one. Let's hope all these sacraments of Father Deuce are not necessary for a third time, and soon you'll be up again. I hope so.
all of this? Here, give me that. No, it's mine. Victory's mine. Sister, you're exhausted. Come along. Sister Gabrielle will take care of you. I can't leave the altar like that, my sisters. It's all right. I'll finish it. My God, my sisters. I am good for nothing. I came to say goodbye. You're leaving? I'm too bored here. Already bored, and you're here only two weeks? Yes, well, go and tell Mother Superior. I already told her. She asked me to stay till tomorrow. In that case, will you assist me later? Tonight, at six o'clock, I have to treat an old sister who is a superior. She suffers a great deal. Will you do it? Yes, certainly. sister? Yes, certainly. But it's impossible for her to wear the habit. In a moment, you'll see why. Will you boil some water and get a little basin? Let's go now. Let's skin the animal. It's now I most regret losing my vision. The blessed Lord surely made you pretty. <laughs> no, I think he forgot. Never will you be a sister of charity. I beg your pardon. Where are you going? To throw this out. I will if you like. Tomorrow before you leave, she'll have a walk. You'll accompany her, our poor suffering sister. And you'll watch over her as if she were God. sent to a hospital at Suyak in the Lut. 
May I please say one thing? Ah, oh, yes. What? At the hospital, you mustn't speak too much, understand? And when you treat a patient, you learn when you should leave to avoid any thanks for just doing your work. It is an honor to look after your patient. <gasps> You're in pain. No, it's nothing. It'll go away. It's my knee. Please do go on. Remember, always see Jesus Christ in the poor whom you treat. The more the poor one is disgusting, the more you love him. You know, today, when Monseigneur made me Sister Vincent, I was scared. I was because I wondered maybe I wouldn't hold out. Don't worry, Sister. Do you suppose I put a habit on you and you wouldn't wear it? Something of yours, a souvenir, could I have any little thing? I have a gift that is yours. It's one no one has had before my sister. You'll put yourself at the base of the cross and stay there. To you, our Lord will speak, and you will hear him. The Holy Virgin told you that. Now we're going to embrace. It's the last one. I'll see you one day. But not in this life. Julie! One last thing, Julie. When you're alone with a man, see that the door's open wide. <laughs> well, nobody could say that you take me lightly. Uh, we could carry four more like you. <laughs> what a chore, my poor sisters. But my place is there. Our new chaplain couldn't say his very first mass without me. It's this or crutches, my mother. <laughs> I was already good for nothing. Well, now Mother Superior will surely say I'm a dead weight. <laughs> So often I'm deprived of the Holy Mass. Here I can have it day and night all the time. I'm annoyed with that altar boy there. He holds his bell only doesn't ring. I often want to shake him. I see that you pray to your patron saint. I pray, but I don't imitate him. Saint Bernard loved to suffer, but not me. Oh, no. In suffering, there's an absurdity. Rather avoid it when we can. You recall Jesus at Gethsemane. My father, is it possible that this trial pass far from me? I'm wondering. I've thought of what you said in your sermon. You commit a sin only if you want to sin. Well, I'm wondering since I've never wanted to commit a sin, did I commit one? That's much too simple. Mother! I was afraid I'd be too late, that you'd already have departed. I wanted to see you again. Tell me, however did you know? 
I believe nobody knew I was going except Mother General. No idea. You see, I've become very sick. Often, no ye, I will be treated. They might decide to operate. And so I'm going. You will return to St. Gildar, my mother. You will return. But I won't promise, mother, that I'll be waiting here. Holy God, protect you, child. I hope you won't remember me too harshly. One is clumsy when one loves someone. It's pride. I never had that sin. Thanks to what you did, I respected my vow of obedience. My mother, it meant that I could be much closer to our Lord. I shall pray to God each day. He will grant you relief, my child, and consolation. No. Mother, not consolation. No, for strength. And patience. Bless me, my mother. Would you inform me, sister, just where might I see someone? Sister Mary Bernard. Sister Marie Bernard. Ah, yes, I might. We're just passing through Nevers. I wouldn't want to miss having a look at the saint. Uh, my rosary, I brought it for her to bless. Absolutely, absolutely. Just stay here, madame. I will go and get her. Mother Marie Josephine Ambert, Mother General of the Sisters of Nevers, died March 1st, 1878, after a long illness. Monseigneur de la Doux accompanies her to her final abode. You must rest. You're completely exhausted. No. I want to go with her at least up to the cave. Bishop, what do you think, sister? He's small and very cold. He isn't going to be here long. On September 22nd, 1878, Sister Marie Bernard took her final vows. In vita eterna. Amen. Corpus Domini nostri, Gesù Cristo, custodia ta di tua, in vita eterna. Amen. The room of the Holy Cross is a sanctuary today. In 1878, with so little space available, it was made into an infirmary for the sisters. On October 30th, Bernadette was taken there, and it was there that she spent the last months of her life on earth. Despite her suffering, the world continued to harass her. Your sister, Toinette, attests that on the 11th of February, when you crossed over the canal barefooted, you declared, and I quote you, the water felt quite warm it was like the water when I washed dishes. It's possible. I recall it did feel warm. But remembering what I said... My child, Father Sempe has to know these things in precise detail. He's working on a book all about your visions. Ah, oh, Mary. My 
tender mother. Here is your child, Bernadette. I'm not able to go on. Have pity on me. It had been 13 years earlier that Bernadette left Lourdes, 13 years since she had seen any of her family. Why didn't you write me of your intended visit? The trip wasn't planned. Somebody said you'd been sick, so I wanted to... They all exaggerate. As usual, my asthma, and the sciatica, and the knee hurts too. But no point in getting too worried. You won't embrace me? <laughs> Bring a chair and talk a while. We've much to say. You're in pain. It's sciatica. It hurts a lot. Now then, why didn't you reply to my letters? You don't write so often. Can't you guess why? Simply because my letters are religious objects, they're collected by anyone going to Lourdes. It's true, people collect things. Objects, little squares of cloth, goblets that belong to me, including my letters. Should it continue, I'll stop writing to anyone. Yes, but I never did that. Antoinette? Oh, it's mostly her husband. He makes her do it. They're miserable, you know. They buried their fifth child. They tried to stop me seeing you today, on account of the cloture. I needed special authorization from Superior General. Well, she understood right away a brother has a right to see his sister. Yes, and especially when it could be the last time. Your wife? Are both of you happy? You could have written to me to tell me you were going to marry. <laughs> no, I don't mind that you abandoned the priesthood. But the one thing you should do when you marry is to speak to whoever's head of the family. Apparently, you are making a living at the grotto selling candles. It isn't that way. I work as a laborer constructing the basilica. I earn 45 sous a day. To get here, a pilgrim at Lourdes paid my way. And my little Pierre? Tell me how he is. Uh, your little Pierre, you say? He's 20 now and measures six feet. I understand even he's been selling these objects, is that right? Yes, but he has other ambitions. He's going into the bishop's services, personal valet. That'll be good. Not bad. Until then, selling all his religious objects, the one thing he shouldn't do, never open shop Sundays. The blessed Lord will arrange it so he earns as much during the week. I will tell him, I promise. I really hoped that my two brothers would dedicate their lives to God. Don't be angry with us. It's difficult having a sister like you. Yes, but you know I'm still Bernadette. Well now, return to Lourdes. Should the blessed Lord demand the sacrifice in this world that we shall not see each other again, accept with joy his will.
Recognize this? Aunt Bernard gave it to you. I found it in a drawer at the mill. I know. Now it can't mean much to you. Now return it to its place. Goodbye, brother. Goodbye, Bernadette. Mm. Mm. Look how it pleases the sun to tease me as it does. He comes all the way to this room to deride. The silicate seems to have an excellent effect on your tumor. Tomorrow I'll come back to change the dressing. I am cared for better than a princess. It's because I'm the bride of the great king. Now, is there anything that you want? All I want is to have the grace of a good death. Nothing else? Nothing. I have to be a victim. No question. You have a terrible enemy in you. Till tomorrow, my sister. That one I don't want to see ever again. <coughs> it won't be much longer, and her morale isn't good either. Tell me how to cure her when all she wants is a good death. You tell me how. How do you feel, my child? Ground up like a poor grain of wheat. It's Easter before long. All things in nature come alive again. You too will be better. No, I won't be. My penance will go on until I meet my death. My good sister. Today, Good Friday is upon us. And also the day of Our Lady of the Seven Sorrows. I think the moment has come to receive extreme unction. This one, I will receive it for my death. It won't be to begin living again. Suffering and prayer. No, I'm no longer good for anything else. You shouldn't be troubled if you can't do anything. When our heart accuses us, God is much greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Our salvation is Christ on the cross, who suffered to save the world. Whoever suffers in patience has no need for any other salvation. The cross replaces all other things, and nothing can replace the cross. Suffer. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of camphor in the vineyards of Engedi. Set me as a seal upon your heart. Let it be my bond. For love is as strong as death. Love is unshakable, like hell itself. It burns as fire burns. It devours like a flame. The voice of my beloved. Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My sister, it is now the litany of the sacraments. Obey the rule. Oh, my crucifix. She wants her crucifix. I've 
receive such grace. And with it done so pitifully little. Confidence, my child. You've done much work for the Blessed Virgin. The moment you leave this world, she'll be there for you. Yes. Yes, I hope that. I saw her. I saw her. And she's beautiful. Beautiful. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me. Pray for a poor sinner. Uh, I'm thirsty. Dear sister, now, my sister, you are on the cross. The way he was. It was at three o'clock in the afternoon on Easter Wednesday in 1879, the very hour that Christ died on the cross, that Sister Marie Bernard rendered her soul to God. For a while, her body lay in state at the little chapel of St. Joseph, where she was to be buried until 1909. On the 8th of December, 1933, Bernadette was canonized, the day of the Immaculate Conception. When her body was exhumed for the third time in 46 years, it was found intact just as it now lies in the chapel of the Sisters of Nevers.